I think I'll ask if Dr. Romano wants a coffee. Dr. Romano. Oh, Dr. Romano, I found a Starbucks. You want me to go back and bring you a coffee? No, I don't. I want you to film this clip of how to do Fisher projections for the DAC study group. But Dr. Romano, I left my coffee outside. It's getting cold. Let's get to work. Um, one of the things that you're going to need to do for the DAT exam is how to be able to do what's called a Fisher projection very, very quickly. I'm going to show you a nice little way to do this. I give you this compound, and I'm going to ask you to name it and give me the configuration. The first thing you would do on this compound is you go off to the side and you assign group priority according to atomic number. Um, this is known as the Kahn Ingold Prelog system. Um, for your purposes, you don't need to really understand the name other than know how to do it. Bromine is number one in priority. The OH is number two, methyl is three, and the H is four. Now, normally, when you go clockwise from number one to two, it's an R. But if number four is along the horizontal, you're going to switch your thoughts. So instead of being an R, the configuration is an S. Now that we know it's an S, we're ready to name it, this being carbon one, this being carbon two. So you put this stereochemical descriptor in front of the name, that being an S. So it's an S, one bromo ethanol. So obviously, if you were to buy this molecule from a chemical company, since it's chiral, you would have to specify, do you want the R enantiomer or the S enantiomer? The second example is a must have for the dad, and it's one of the very favorite DAT type questions. Here we have two chiral carbons, and this I find the most trickiest. First thing we're gonna do is let's go to this carbon right here. That's gonna be our very first carbon. Now what I like to do is to cover the bottom up. So we have an H to the left of us, bromine, we got an OH above us, and all this underneath me, I'm gonna call a big R group. And that big R group starts with a carbon. So as you can see, the bromine is priority number one, the OH is two, the R group, which started with a carbon, is number three, and there's number four. You go from one to two, it looks like an S, but because four is on the horizontal, the molecule is an R. We now do the same thing to the second center of chirality. I cover up the top. The bromine, as you can see, is to the right of me. H is to the left. Methyl is underneath. And above me is the big R group, which is just a carbon bonded to a bromine. So as you can see, assigning the priorities, bromine is one. The R group, which is a carbon bonded to a bromine, that's going to be number two. Methyl is three. There's that group number four, again on the horizontal. So we're going to be switching our thoughts. Instead of an S, it's an R. Putting it all together now. This being carbon one, this being two, and this being three, I put the stereochemical descriptor. Since there's two chiral carbons, I need to identify a number. I didn't need that in the first example because there was only one center of chirality. So what we're going to get here is a 1R, 2R, 1,2-dibromo, 1-propanol. If I did have, for example, a 1S, 2S, that would be the enantiomer of this. Or if I had a 1R, 2S, that would be its diastereomer. I'll be explaining these terms more in the next lectures that we'll do, but I heavily emphasize this in the Dat Destroyer book. But hopefully this gives you a good idea. In the future, I'll show you how to do what's called a Newman projection and how to go from Fisher into Newman, which is a little tricky, but I'll show you some of the tricks. But this is a must have. So therefore, you gotta make sure you understand, you gotta build up your speed. Speed is very important to be able to rifle through these on the DAT exam. All right, I hope that helps you, and I need to get back to doing some molecular orbital calculations. So that should give you some idea of how to do a fission projection. Okay, Dr. Romano, I'm getting a little hungry now. Uh, I, do you know how I get a donut? No donuts for you. I think you've had enough, and you should be maybe doing some running. Good day to you. Oh, Dr. Romano, I did run earlier. Good day to you, sir.